Moving on, let's jump on to what Eric Griffin had to say about the comedy uh, club. Because he went there and performed. And unfortunately, on the golden hour, he wasn't given the time to actually say how he felt. And he maybe felt a bit guilty because his two co-hosts are what you would you would imagine. Chris D'Elia at one point and Brendan Shaw at one point were probably closer to Joe Rogan than Eric Griffin was. So it was a surprise to me that Eric Griffin got booked there before them. But when you consider the, con the, the context, the fact that D'Elia is, you know, post diddling accusations and lengthy YouTube documentaries talking about how much of a pest he is it probably wasn't going to be anytime soon he's going to be on Joe Rogan's comedy club considering how Joe Rogan now is averse to having anybody too controversial around him and Brendan with all the drama going around around him and Brent, you know and Rogan and Brendan's relationship being a bit on the rocks it probably made sense also but you can imagine it kind of just cut deep still that he got booked so when Eric Griffin did get booked, I'm really interested to see what his impression of the club was because he's a bit of a hater and he's a quite bitter and, you know, just a hate-filled man in general anyway. So let's see if his heart was warmed that now he got invited because at one point Eric Griffin was kind of in taking the piss out of, you know, the comedy mothership. Remember on the Golden Hour, he was like, oh, have you guys heard about the mothership, right? He was kind of mocking it in a way. And then out of the blue, he gets booked in there. So I wonder now if his tune has changed. The same way his tune changed about Brendan when Brendan started paying him money. Let's see. Come on, Eric. Give us the lowdown, brother. Let us know what's the deal. Let us know. What did you think of the comedy mothership, Eric Griffin? Please tell us. Uh, let's see here. It's from the episode number 231 of Riffin with Griffin. I think he's got timestamps here. Yes, he has. Hallelujah. And we're going to scrub across when this video loads and my computer starts being slow. Please bear with me. Please bear with me. It's loading now. And what are we doing? We oh, yeah. Cool. Today's show is brought to you by Door. There you go. Cool. There you go. Boom. It's loaded up there. Let's see what he says. Mothership Austin. He got me this hat. <laughs> who, 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 got his hat? who got the hat for him? Brogan. Let's play it for the start. Come on, computer. Austin, Austin. Woo-wee! <laughs> Howdy, cowboys. Possum in the gun bush. Um, and so shout out to Smance. Check out Smance on Twitch. Fantastic gamer. He got me this hat. <laughs> he got me this hat. He actually got matching hats for me and Rachel. First of all, let me tell you something that Rachel did. So what I didn't know is my boy Smance out in Austin, he hit up Rachel on Instagram and was like, hey, I want to buy Eric a cowboy hat. You know what I mean? Can you tell me his size? And Rachel being Rachel was like, oh, well, here's his size. But you know what would be really great is if you got me a hat too. Like it can't just be about me. <laughs> you know what I mean? So this woman. And so, all right. I Random Twitch guy DMing your wife. And asking them about your hat size, dicey, dicey, tad bit dicey. And I didn't know this. And he didn't tell me, right? So then I, he he shows up with the hats, and I'm like, oh man, this is great, man. Thank you. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he showed up with the hats. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I'm a hat guy now. Look at that. That looks good. It ain't bad, huh? It's better than that fucking fat boy hat he had on. What's what's that hat called? He, he had that hat called. He had that hat that there's that meme of that fat guy that's like smiling, you know. That he had that hat on. So this is much better, to be fair. And it ain't bad, right? And so I get home and I want to surprise Rachel, and I'm like, babe, turn around. You know, I take it out of my bag, I put my hat on, and then I'm holding her hat, and she turns around. And she around and she's like oh yay you're right but then she tells me she's like well i already knew you already knew you got me doing this whole surprise thing and you already knew i mean i'm telling you man the fact that she made the do by by her a hat <laughs> that's women y'all <laughs> There's a new sheriff in town, y'all, and his name's Sheriff Griffin. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> Hulk. 
There should be a country version. It's riffing with Griffin on a country road. Riffing with Griffin in a truck. <laughs> Anyways. <coughs> Sorry. Man, my voice. My, it's my sinuses, man. I, I, I don't know. Hey, the old sinuses, eh? Off that trip to Austin with the wife, huh? The old sinuses. You know, you know. <laughs> Anyways, all right, so I want to talk about I went to the mothership in Austin and shout out to Joe Rogan. What a great club this is, man. If you're ever passing through the Austin area, you got to go check this club out. I've been doing comedy for 20 plus years. I've been to most clubs all over the country. Uh-huh. And the vibe and everything about this club, it's it it's 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 the best club club in the country. But you know, it's new, right? So and you had to hate in it. You had to be a little bit of hate in it, a little bit of cynicism. It wouldn't be Eric Griffin without a little bit of cynicism. He gets booked at a club that he probably didn't think he was ever gonna get booked at. Previous weeks he was like, have you guys heard about the comedy mothership? Right, he was kind of like mocking it in a way. How dare it be a mothership as if it's the only club that's important, right? Feeling left out. Then out of the blue, he gets surprised and he gets booked there last minute. Oh shit, I'm booked to the whole weekend, and now he's saying it's the best club in the best club. You know, he's been to in a while, and at the very end, a little bit of cynicism. But it's new. It's like, come on, Eric, man, just be happy for once. Fuck, you know, you're so miserable. So of course. You know, it is, but I'm not going to take anything away from it. So, you just did. <laughs> you know, I got. Nice, some pictures. Yeah, man. So here's some pictures from the mothership. I mean, the attention to detail. That's the green room. Holy shit. <laughs> okay, cool. Fair play then. That's the green room. Holy fuck. If you're not seeing the pictures, he's got like these big, massive leather chairs. Oh, that's the table that uh, Rogan was talking about. Rogan said um, the table. No, someone said about the table that Rogan had um, some wood carving person, some crazy artist online that I think he saw on Instagram that basically can carve these tables and put all this crazy art on it. And I think this is meant to be like a snake or something. And it's and it's kind of like relief. So it kind of, you know, you can kind of feel it. It's been you know, all the scales on the fucking snake have been carved in there. It's crazy. It's all kind of done by hand. So Joe got one built bespoke for the fucking green room. Okay, so Josie Masters and who else said it to me? Um, Uche, everybody else said about, oh, when I said, oh, why don't other comedians have like comedy clubs? This is the reason why. This table's probably like 20 grand <laughs> and it's in the green room when most people can't see it. <laughs> no one else can fuck with him. No one else can fuck with him. You know? No one else can fuck with him. That's the problem. He's got a 20 grand table, maybe more, in the green room. Leather sofas, candles, screens, wind, like, you know, mirrors with like a ring light around them. All you can drink fucking booze. I don't see no tiger whiskey though. Like all the whiskey you want here. Look at that. Just a whole full table full of them. Like... Okay, I get it now. Only Rogan could do this, really. Or if you've got loads of money. Most comedians can't afford to do this. This is, just a, this is a lot. Fucking you know, it looks nice. What's well, here? The ring says, Laugh How AZ has hate subscribed Griffin's channel. Am I subscribed to it? Okay, I didn't know. To be fair, when I subscribe to channels, it doesn't, it's not an, in, I don't know, it's just a subscription. It's not, it's not an endorsement of me like liking what they do or whatever. It's just, you know, you just subscribe, isn't it? It's just not that big of a deal, really. But I understand what you mean in terms of a comedic effect. I'm here ragging on a guy and I'm subscribed to it. It is what it is. But I'm not going to I'm not going to like I'm not going to dislike his streams or anything. I mean, I just say what I say on the streams. I just keep it moving. It's never that deep, but you know, I get you. So if you're listening right now, you got to go watch. In the green room, they have they have two different groups. They got this main room called the Fat Man and this other room called the Little Boy, which is like a smaller room, holds like 75 or so, and the main room holds like 250. But just like all this art on the wall, all the attention to detail, it's really great. Like that's in the green room. <coughs> that little Oh, I love that security door thing they got, man, to go in. That's pretty sick. I just love that detail. That get together neon light as well. It's really cool as well. J Joey Diaz quote. Sign right there says, get it together, bitch. That's so Joe Rogan, if you know him. 
you know, it's called the Mothership. So there's like sort of like alien artwork all over the place, and it's just like there's this bar called Mitzi's, which is named after Mitzi Shore at the Comedy Store, and the bar is this beautiful thing. That's what the the from the balcony, the view of the main room looks like. Look at that. Look at the green room. Look at all the booze you can eat, all the drink, glasses there ready to go, probably ice in the, you know, there as well. Some probably more drinks underneath. Just set up nicely for you. Don't have to ask a single question. That's in the green room. They had this great bar and like all these great pictures. And it's just like, you know, it's clean and, and, and yeah. the lines. It looks fucking nice, though, to be fair. Even just the, the, the kind of waiting reception area place with the screen there so you can see he's performing. It looks fucking cool. They're great. And like, you know, and so I don't know. I just, I really had a great time. It was five sold out shows, you know, and I was like, man, you know. And what I like about the club and what Joe Rogan, the fact that someone like Joe Rogan made this club is because one, He's got more money than God, right? <laughs> well, he got a lot of money for a comic. You know what I mean? You know, he's going to be a billionaire one day. You know what I'm saying? And so he made this club. You know, he's like Willy Wonka. You know what I mean? He's got this, it's, this amazing stuff that goes on in there. And they got all the, you know. So anyway, my point is this. He's not doing this to make money. You know, this is not a, this is a thing. He's like, he cares about comedy. Mm -hmm. He cares about the comedy community. He's building a reputation at his club that he's saying to the people in this city, I am going to give you a great show. These are people I think are really funny and they're going to be on my stage. That's why I think, great, great point that he made that, right? That's why I think, personally, I think this. I think that Rogan's reputation, again, maybe from the outside, especially from people like me who aren't in America and aren't plugged in, and don't go to a lot of comedy shows and just see it from the outside in. I think for a long period of time, many people, especially people that listen to the podcast, maybe didn't respect Rogan's opinion on comedy because of the people he championed and said they were murderers, right? All these friends are murderers. Then you watch their comedy specials on Netflix or wherever they put them on, and you're like, these guys are shit. Apart from the new guys that I've entered into his circle, like the Shane Gillises and the Mark Normans of the world, most of the guys associated with Joe Rogan they not they kind of flat to deceive, so everyone's kind of like, hold on, this isn't really like this isn't good, this isn't funny. Then you see Rogan's comedy, and again, that's from the quiet taste. Also, if you're into that kind of shouty hump, stool humping type of thing, it can be hard to kind of vibe with it. But I think the way that Rogan's approached this comedy mothership, and unfortunately for Brendan Schaub, the fact that he hasn't invited Brendan Schaub to perform there, just because he probably doesn't think he's funny enough, I think has restored rogan's reputation and kind of people now trust him way more i think so and maybe the just the vibe around the, st the place is good because it's not like he's bringing across all of his friends from la that he was kind of cool with he's basically selecting people he's kind of started from scratch and selecting people he actually thinks are funny and he's trying to run a club so yes yeah, exactly he's he's restored his comedic integrity exactly case crash 984 you smashed it there I think Rogan has restored his comedic integrity. You may not like Joe Rogan's comedy, but you can't lie and say the people he's booking at his flipping club aren't the best. You know what I mean? Like, let's just take a look at it quickly now before we continue on with Eric Griffin. Let's look at the comedy mothership now, this flipping site, right? Have I got it on there? Yeah, I should have it. Let's see. What's the upcoming in terms of dates? But I think the way he's approached this and he started it with a clean slate, he's got the people that he thinks are funny. He's given people locally a chances as well. And even someone like Eric Griffin, I didn't even know, you know, Bre 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 Rogan and Eric Griffin were close, cool like that because he doesn't really like, you know, hang out with Rogan that much or go on a show. But he gave Eric Griffin a show that shows you that, you know, cool, I, I may not like you or we may not be super tight and cool, but I still think you're super funny and I think you should be performing at my club. And he, put, and, he, and, he, and he gets him on there so um, we've got Ian Edwards here performing soon um, who else we've got here oh no it's, Ian Edwards is performing this weekend actually we've got open mics happening and crew show Kill Tony we've got um, what is it this is an improv show by Brian Simpson called Bottom of the Barrel we've got a solid comedy show hosted by Derek Poston and Esan Ahmad, we've got a show with Will Montgomery, we've got Holtzman's Heroes, Robert Kelly's doing a show. Oh, Robert Kelly's doing one, sick. Robert Kelly headlines a fat man happening soon. Uh, we've got Holtzman again there. We've got Doug Stanhope performing. 
Sam J performing. I don't know who that is, but big up Sam J. Duncan Trussell doing something. But Kreischer coming. Andrew Dice Clay. Oh, one of my faves. I know it's in the quiet taste, but I fuck, Andrew Dice Clay makes me laugh so much. Legitimately. I, I, I fucking fuck. I think it's super hilarious. So Andrew Dice Clay's there. And he's a legend, of course. you got Greg Fitzsimmons the most racist comedian in America. He's there. <laughs> Dave Battelle. Oh, look at this. Rogan has restored his comedic integrity, for sure. Tom Papa's performing. Dave Smith is performing. Gabriel Ingl oh, Fluffy. Fluffy's performing. Come on, brothers. Come on, man. Ari Shafir's got a show. Too much good shit. Rich Voss is performing there July wow tony woods jim norton in july as well yo it's too much man it's too much nick swartzen right the guy who's the originator of the fifa sutherland right very brendan's bit that he stole there kill tony like this legitimately i think has restored um joe rogan's comic integrity i know he probably doesn't care about that sort of shit but i think him unfortunately denying brendan opportunity to flip in um play there has tr made people trust him more to be fair i think so anyway i don't know if you guys agree let's go back to eric Griffin, let's see what he says and then the people in that city can go you know what let's go see who's there as opposed to a lot of clubs yeah exactly shades cow first comic to ever be the gateway who could handle this much power and influence and not fumble that's why i'm always going to be a fan of, of rogan especially in this case because i said it plenty of times on here before give anybody else in in that la stand-up comedy scene big up austin casey also just like my earlier comments about brenda acting like big shit at the comedy store he probably doesn't want brenda there trying to act that same way at his new club he just won't have it big up austin casey fantastic point fantastic point i also think what you said there about um not wanting brendan on there to have that attitude i think maybe because as much as people give rogan stick he does he's open to criticism in some respect so it wouldn't surprise me if rogan sometimes secretly didn't like how everything went down with him and his crew at the comedy store it was fun while it was there but maybe some distance some time away from there made him reflect and think you know what Maybe we could have gone about things differently. And he maybe regrets how they kind of acted to some people or made the people feel. And now he wants to correct everything in his new club and say, you know what, we're going to start on you. We're going to have a, an inclusive scene, a scene based on merit, not based on who you know and whatnot. And we're going to go from there and start from fresh. And how you start from fresh is not giving Brendan Shaw a set there because he doesn't deserve him because he's not funny enough. You know what I mean? You just start from that thing. And I think that's all he probably said. I'm legitimately sure. I'm legitimately, I don't know why I think this, but I'm almost certain that Brendan Schaub knows why Joe Rogan doesn't want to book him at a club. He's probably told him, hey, you're just not funny enough. Just go and get funnier and you perform. But Brendan probably hasn't taken it well and just, you know, gets on his fields. He probably thinks he's the funniest person in the world. Blah, blah. I'm sure Rogan has told him, hey, at the moment, you're not funny enough. So it is what it is. They don't care about building the reputation in their city anymore. All they care about is making money. And that's fine. If that Yeah, exactly. And Crash is true too as well. Crash says, um, Rogan was definitely upset, Brendan and Callan. Yeah, exactly. That, that could also be the fact. Maybe partly my theory is correct, but also partly that. That maybe when the whole Bobby Lee stuff went down and Rogan's name was involved in it because fucking Callan was going around threatening people, using Rogan's name, and maybe Brendan was doing the same thing. Rogan really, because I think Rogan's a little bit insulated from stuff. He kind of, I think, probably runs away from people, changes his phone often, doesn't answer back on texts and shit. He lives in his own world because he's got money and he's got clout. He can do what he wants, basically. So maybe that whole Kalila and Bobby Lee affair was the first time he realised what was actually going on. He probably was unaware of how people were talking or using his name behind his back or the vibe that they were putting out there. I mean, he was probably completely unaware because I'm sure everybody when they're around Rogan's on their best behavior, you know? Legitimately, everyone around Rogan is on their best behavior. So he didn't know what was going on. 
and he probably only got exposed to it when the Bobby Lee and Kalala shit went down. And then he said, you know what, change. So weirdly enough, it's just, it's their fault they're not at the club there. If Brendan and Brian would have just been cool and not done any fuck shit, if Brendan didn't do the drug walk, if he didn't try and fuck, what's his name? If Brendan didn't try and fuck um, Kalila, everyone would have been cool. He was too thirsty. He just should have drank my water that I have. It's finished. That's what he should have done. He should have had some water. Yo, big up Crash984. Appreciate it, brother. Big up Sauce for another awesome stream. Yeah, big up you. Appreciate the support, bro. Thank you for the super chat. That's your business model. That's fine. If you want to be a club owner, a manager that all you care about is making money, like then that's fine. I have no, I, I have no problem with you doing that. But overall, thanks, Eric. <laughs> I have it. I have to to just say that you don't care about the comedy community. That you don't care about building comics up. Care about. Bring Do you care about the comedy community when you pick Brendan over Bobby Lee? No, 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 no. Bring a great show to your city based off your reputation as a comedy club. Now all you care about is just making money. So then there that then you're gonna have TikTok stars on stage. You're gonna have people former UFC fighters on stage. People that don't care about the art form <laughs> on stage because you're like, I gotta sell tickets, I gotta sell tickets. And you, it, it's supposed to be two way because the business has turned into a lot of places and they're run by dickheads. I'm not going to do any names because, hey, I'm still in the business, but they know they assholes. They're dickheads. All they care. Oh, you know, all they care about is ticket counts and drink sales and all this stuff. And there's no building up the young comedy community or even uh, establishing a great reputation. So I have a problem with that. You know, I really, I really, I really just have a problem with that. That's just, I'm not for that. I just think that there should be a mix because a lot of times now the comedy clubs are just all about like, well, what's your social media following and can you get people on your social media following to come to our club? And then it's just all about that. So then you just got big podcasters and Brendan Schub, you know, whatever, you know, popular people. And then there's nothing about the comedy, the comedy anymore. Right. It, it, all the things that he credits Brendan for having, an audience, people clearly care about. You remember that clip I played earlier of him basically trying to justify why he maybe hated Brendan before and now he likes him because he's paying him money, but trying to make it, you know, basically trying to make it make sense in his head. A bit of cope was going on there. He was like, oh yeah, he's got his audience. People clearly like him, what he does, blah, blah, blah. blah. Who's to say who's what's funny? All the things that he's saying in to, you know, to in praise of Brendan, he's now using it as a slight in order to say, hey, this is why Rogan's club is awesome because he's not taking these things into account. Oh, you got to love Eric Griffin. Where it, it doesn't matter, you know, and I get that too, and, and I'm not necessarily saying there's anything wrong with that because these people have connected with their audience, you know? Like if you're like, a, you got a big podcast and people have connected with you, they want to come see you. They, they like your sensibility and they're watching you. But that's not the art form. I'm just saying, remember the art form. Remember people. Do you get what I'm saying? I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. So. No, we don't get what you're saying because you're now sitting next to Brendan Shaw, who's the complete opposite of everything you're saying right now. Legitimately. You called it out before, which is a bit weird. But now all of a sudden he pays you and it's different. And now you've gone to Rogan's place and now it's different. Bit weird, but I get it. We'd love to hear your comments about that. But I just want to say again, shout out to Joe Rogan. Absolutely fabulous club. It really is a good time. Oh, and here's something that they do that I really love. And I was talking about it with some of the comics there. They lock up your phone. So they have these phone things that are locked up. And you can't get to your phone, you know, while you're at the club. You know, it's locked in a box, in a little bag. But I forgot what the things are called. But your phone is locked up and you can't watch the phone. Let me tell you what this does to the show. It makes people engage. It makes people, when they're walking in the club, now that their phone is gone, they're actually engaging with each other. They're actually looking at other people and they're being like, wow, this is a shared experience, shared community ex experience okay. right now. And I think that's so important for the show, any show. Come and watch the show. 
Don't look at your phone. Don't try to take pictures. Don't try to like, oh, let me see what's going on next. When you can actually sit in made for better energy, it just made for better shows. The funny thing about this is that Eric Griffin is like notorious for always being on his phone on the golden hour. I'm not sure about you guys, but I always feel like on podcasts, if somebody's on their phone, it kind of snaps you out of the moment. And it's again, it's off. It's weird for me to say this, but I listen to enough podcasts and watch enough live streams that when somebody gets on their phone, it kind of makes you want to touch yours. But if they're just talking and engaging and trying to be funny and but what, what doing what they're doing, you just kind of go with the flow. Or you maybe have it as background noise and stuff. You don't realize it. And you just listen to the whole entire thing. Whereas when they're always on their phone, it kind of knocks you out and you get bored or you start you know, losing attention or paying attention elsewhere. So, it's, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's interesting in podcasting like that. It happens a lot. Like, that, that's why I think Rogan's podcast works really well because he kind of, you know, actively, before he was very strict about people, telling people not to lose their phones. Now he's kind of like, you know, he doesn't really say too much. And sometimes he'll pull out his own phone to check stuff. But I feel like that's what made Joe Rogan's podcast really good because it was like three hours of like an intense conversation. Like, I remember the, the fear of one joke in it, right? Like he's never spoken to anyone in his life more than he's spoken to Joe Rogan. Like, like, but that was what made it awesome. So I find that really interesting and strange. But I just don't know how I feel about the whole magnet pouch thing. Because if I'm not mistaken, the pouch is called this. And I think I had it on the picture, right? Uh, Joe, no, Joe Rogan Comedy Club phone pouch. I think I already saw, I think I showed it to you. I think Chappelle is the one that made it popular. But um, it's a company that that does them. But I'm sure there's other companies that also do them. I forgot the name. Uh, actually, let me, let me write here. It's called this. Let me see. Let me write here. Let's do Dave Chappelle. Uh, that's the, yeah, Yonder, Yonder Bags. Thank you, Josie. That's what it's called, these. So this is what he's talking about. So it's these little things. And if I'm, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, the premise around it is that it's just like sock um, material type thing. I think that's his phone, whatever. You put your phone in it and it locks with a magnet, with a particular magnet but then the magnets are usually outside. So if you want to use your phone, you could just go out when you leave the flipping theater room that you're in the comedy club. And then you can go and, you know, where your phone is locked up and then unlock it where it is, use it and then come back. But, but I guess in some places they lock them permanently there until you're finished and then you can get your phone. But the premise is you can't use your phone when you're inside the actual theater or wherever the room that you're in where the comedy is happening you have to kind of go out so it kind of just it kind of puts you off because you have to keep going out and they usually try and put it in a location that you have to kind of travel a bit to kind of go um but this is what they're doing but in in berlin clubs what they do right berlin nightclubs phone stickers they usually just put phone stickers over your lens so berlin nightclub phone sticker it's fairly it, it's fairly self-explanatory but i'll just show you anyway that's what they do usually in berlin clubs so it's like yeah i, I think you saw it there right already they put like a little green sticker there so let's do Berkheim. but that's what they usually do on your phone they'll put a little sticker on it don't really okay no one's got a picture of their phone covered with stickers but essentially looks like this they look like that. So you have your phone as you get if if you if you do get in past the fucking security and the bouncers big up Sven you'll be um searched and shit and then they'll take your phone and they'll put a sticker on it when this when the phone's in the bucket they'll put a little sticker like that over top of it and over the front also and they have obviously security walking around plain clothes so if you lose your phone they'll chuck you out straight away they've got a no tolerance policy on phones if they put a sticker on your phone and see you taking a picture you get chucked out straight away no no explanations no nothing so obviously it's on you to be you know what i mean um respectful of that but that's what they do um, but big up them. Let's go back to Eric Griffin again. Where is he? There. I really felt connected with the crowd in a way that I haven't felt in a long time because there wasn't little lights in the show. I wasn't worried about some Karen like, oh, let me film this because this joke sounds like it's going to be something that I can get him in trouble for or something. Like, you don't have to worry about none of that. It was no alleg no no cameras no allegations. Hey, great! So, shout out to Joe Rogan once again for a fantastic experience, and you know, I hope you guys 
uh, get a chance to see that club. All right. Cool. That was a that was a review. Very enthusiastic, very positive, uh, very cheerful, <laughs> a resounding, a really, re- you know, uh, a really rah rah review, right? Especially when you think it's one of the most important clubs in America right now or in the world. It's a place where everybody's falling over themselves to try and get a slot there. Everyone's fighting each other. Everyone's pissed off that they can't get up there. They're trying to do all they can to get in Joe's good graces to get a slot there. Eric Griffin gets a slot there out of the blue. And uh, this is his face after the fact. <laughs> That's his face looking so dour. <laughs> oh, this guy is a funny dude, man. You gotta love Eric Griffin. You really have to love Eric Griffin. Uh, 